Good morning. <clears throat> this is Munir Ajam again with the iSmile series. Uh, we're continuing with the project management topics uh, on the camp methodology project life cycle. Um, in previous videos, we have talked about the difference between phases and stages. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, another video, we talk about the Sukkot camp model, three phases of discovery development and delivery. Uh, in this video and the next few one, we will focus on each of these phases. The first phase is a discovery phase and this phase consists of two small stages. Remember in the SUCAD model and the camp which is a customizable, uh, customizable adaptable methodology for managing project which is the methodology we've developed back in 2007-2008 uh, and currently on version 3. We have three phases as we mentioned and in the first phase, the discovery phase, we have two stages because in our methodology we separate the phases from the stages. So the uh, discovery phase have the concept stage which is should be very brief and very short and I'll explain in a second and then we have the feasibility stage. So there are two stages in this phase. What are these? Let's start with the concept. Uh, the concept stage starts from the idea. A concept for a project. And again, this could be coming from the strategic plan or could be coming from any employee within the organization. You can refer to an earlier video on idea management. And uh, so any, there is an idea, regardless where it came from. And regardless whether that idea is a response to a threat or an opportunity to pursue, to consider. And usually what the Sukkad model says, uh, for the idea, uh, to explain it, we produce a document called Project Brief. And the Project Brief have three points in it only. The first one is what is the project, a description, short description, one or two sentences. Why are we doing it? basically justification. And the third question was the strategic alignment. How does that project align to the organization's strategy? Again, we expanded on the concept of idea management in an earlier video. You can refer to it. If management approves the idea, the project brief, then ideally they would authorize a feasibility study. Now, a lot of people refer to the feasibility study as a business case. It's really more in our view, the feasibility study is much more than a business case. Business case for us, basically, if I want to simplify things, use simple English, um, is basically that, to me, there is a business case for a project. That means there is a need for this project, and the project is justified. So to me, the business case it's basically is that there is a project, and the project is justified. However, the feasibility study goes beyond that. Basically, it says, even if the project is justified, we should still study it. Can, and basically the purpose of the feasibility study, in a way, the feasibility study is the first risk management exercise. Remember, the project is either a threat, a response to a threat, or an opportunity to pursue, which means the project is a risk event. We have to study it. So feasibility study is the first exercise that we can study this risk to determine if we can deliver it successfully. Every project also is usually launched from a project owner perspective to realize some benefit. Again, the benefit could be return on investment, profit, whatever the case might be, if it's an opportunity, or if it is a threat, is ideally we wanna eliminate the threat uh, to uh, reduce cost or uh, uh, eliminate the situation, comply with some regulation or whatever the case might be. So the feasibility study go beyond the uh, business case and it's really focused on can we deliver this project successfully? I mean, obviously there is a need for a project. Okay, would we be able to deliver successfully and how? So the feasibility study is a big topic. Maybe we'll have a special topic on us, but in the Sukkot model it has about 14, 15 items to consider such as financial uh, major risks, such as market demand and supply, 
such as technology issues and evaluation, sustainability, and there are many other factors. Again, this could be a topic by itself. Now, at the conclusion of the feasibility study, the team can conclude whether the project is feasible or not. If it is not, obviously it means the project should be stopped. If the project is feasible, in many organizations that will become an automatic approval to go forward, here we say, no, you should stop. And assuming the organization have a certain level of maturity and practice the concept of portfolio management, then the project should be considered to go through the pool of project and program within the organization as part of the overall strategic planning or part of the overall business planning and to determine if this project is a priority in comparison to other projects the organization have. So just because the project is feasible, that should not be an automatic go. So ideally it has to go through this pool, through this analysis in comparison to other project and program within the organization. And if all is fine, great. Uh, the project is feasible, great. The project is a priority, go ahead. And with this, it concludes the feasibility stage and by default it also concludes the discovery phase.